Hey all, War 8 here against HCMA. They do have smaller rosters on average, but you know, we've let that <laughs> lull us into a false sense of security before, so can't let it happen this time. This long shot is very simple with Reed. It turns off a lot of his problems. You're going to be hitting him while stunned normally. Defiance means we can't gain buffs. Hitting him a lot while he's stunned means that pure of heart isn't an issue. Power focus 2 means that we can stay on him. He's not going to go um, red. And as long as he doesn't have pure of heart, it doesn't really matter if he throws a special 2. At worst, we block it. We uh, take a little bit of damage on that. We heal up for the next one. I will say overall, this is going to be fewer fights than normal for me. And the biggest reason for that is just because I actually have a torch fight later. And I haven't had torch fights <laughs> in a very long time, it seems, due to him being banned and all that. He obviously used to be one of my go-tos. See, there's that special two we blocked just to be safe. I know the evade, but really would not be fun uh, to be wrong right now. But the thing is that these days... Torch seems to be a champion you bring in for only, like, one fight. You use the pre-fight, you move on. He's not nearly as dominant as he was back in the day because the community tends to have realized there are other options, including Mr. Fantastic. And because I had to bring Torch for the one fight, I couldn't bring other champions that would allow me to take other fights. So, here we are, but... We do have one very important one, which is this rank 4 Nimrod on Power Snack. Now, I've said before, Reed can take almost anyone on Power Snack. His biggest issues are champions that do, like, a lot of damage over time effects. Like, I wouldn't take I-Bomb here. Um, or champions that shrug. Nimrod is neither, but he is unstoppable armor. So, we are boosting up fairly considerably here, making sure that the pre-fight stick, see there they are, gonna go ahead and throw on the advanced power back boost to make sure that we get to our first special two and really lock down a lot of his stuff early. But because Nimrod gains armor ups on two different timers, both when his protocol charges come around and when the global gives him one, there are a lot of windows in here where I know I cannot be caught in the middle of a combo and want to make sure I'm not in the middle of a special. So the rhythm of this fight is honestly kind of stilted. It's still a good matchup. He's still defiant, so power snack is not an issue. He still um, does good damage. He ramps up well. He's going to stay in control of Nimrod, but it's just much slower than a lot of other potential read fights. There are obviously other answers you can use for Nimrod here. This is the one I'm comfortable with, and I'm really not worried. The other thing is that because of all of these debuffs he's going to put on us, our evade chance is going to be sky high for most of the fight. It's going to get even higher when he eventually goes unblockable, uh, and we're going to be healing constantly. So extremely, extremely safe fight. Go ahead and knock him down right there. Looking for a good window to throw this special to. That was a risk. He could have gone unstoppable. Probably would have comboed into us. We would have ended up evading it, but it wouldn't have knocked him down, and so we would have needed to immediately look for an opportunity to land another heavy. That is kind of the, the theme of this fight, is that it's not the end of the world if he goes unstoppable in the wrong spot. He's probably not going to hit you that hard. Because look, we don't have an energy vulnerability on us. We actually have energy resistance. He has like at most two armor ups at any one time. So even if he is in blitz or eradicate, he's not going to be hitting that hard. He's not going to be able to land full combos because we're going to evade out. There are a lot of damage mitigation abilities here. But we do need to be looking for spots to land our heavies. I was also having a lot of input problems in this fight, so there I'm forced to go for a heavy counter, but just in general throughout this fight, I went for parries, and I was sure they were going to stick, and then I evaded, telling me they didn't. So here, I learned something new about Reed, 
which is that his special three, which despite the fact that special threes don't always count as a knockdown, Reed's special three always counts as a knockdown for refreshing his um, pre-fight debuffs, unless the opponent is unstoppable, which I did not know. If I had known that, I would have danced at the wall slightly longer, um, waited for that unstoppable to go away, then thrown the special three, because I knew that there was a chance that he was going to push him to his special two, and then he would go unstoppable for a long time, and we might lose our debuffs the way that we just did. So that's definitely unfortunate. Um, we are now completely unramped. He's going to start gaining power at his full energized rate now. Not exactly what I had going in mind here, but this is also why Defiance is so helpful, because we still don't have to worry about Power Snack. I mentioned Willpower earlier. He's not able to do a lot of damage to us, even if I had messed up the Special Evades. Basically, as long as I don't get hit by a big Special 2, that's the Evade I really have to have down, I'm going to be okay. So here again... I actually lose them a second time, because that special two is a bit of a problem. But that was kind of what was expected if we lost the ramp while he had his Energize up. Because this is a rank four SIG 200 Nimrod, that Energize is very powerful. Now I would have loved to have thrown another special one there to get our debuffs, but the power drain took its toll, and so we ended up actually at a net loss of debuffs there, and it took almost four minutes. Not the way I intended that fight to go. It would have gone much, much better if I had known about the unstoppable interaction with the special three and had been able to wait another one or two seconds. Oh well, next time I know. This time it was just a slower than normal fight where I still ended at 95% health. So I maintain that Reed is a very, very good option for that node. So next up we have Sigil Witch here on one of these intercept nodes in section 2 on path 5. The basic idea here is simply that Sigil Witch um, will put a lot of buffs on you, they will eventually expire, she'll gain a bunch of power, she'll throw more specials, her instability will rise, you won't be able to control it, and eventually you'll either get degened or she'll throw a special 3 and you'll get degened. <laughs> and it's just very, very few champions can handle that. I probably would have used a Mr. Negative here otherwise um, if, you know, Defiance didn't exist and if I had been able to path it. But for now, it does exist. And so Killmonger's a great counter. I have no idea what I was trying to do there. Like, I know going into this fight, I was like, you don't need True Strike to win this. But then for some reason, when she threw that first special one, I was like, hmm, it'd be nice to get True Strike. And so I dashed in, knowing there was probably a way to evade the rock up close and then get True Strike, but I hadn't actually practiced it. Never do improv like that in the middle of a war fight. So that was very, very dumb. Um, cost me a third of my health. Definitely going to take probably two potions. Killmonger has a decently high health pool. But that's okay. Um... I'm stupid but not dead is a valid use of healing potions. So for the rest of the fight, it's really very simple. We're not gaining buffs, and so we don't have to worry about Mystic Dispersion. We can parry freely. We're throwing these special ones over and over again because they're giving us the counterpunch charges and allowing us to get what counts as an intercept when she rushes in, throws a medium into our block, and we immediately respond, interrupting her medium which is the definition of an intercept. You have to interrupt their medium animation. So that gives us the big fury, and even without True Strike boosting our damage further, Killmonger takes her down nice and easy. And then I have to use two level five potions. That one's done a little bit. But moving on to Omega Sentinel, I cut the video there and went and dueled several times because the whole reason that I brought Killmonger to this lane was actually less because of Sigil Witch, who I could have taken with Reed, just slowly, and more because I needed the True Strike for Omega Sentinel. I had dueled a bunch for this earlier. I dueled two long um, three-star versus rank four six-star duels before this fight. And basically the idea is you want to push her to her special one before 
um, she gets five armors. And so we were close there, but then despite the fact that I just went and dueled for the evade and the counter so many times, it's Killmonger is so good at it, that still happened and I got auto-blocked. So thankfully I triggered the auto-block with a special there, so she was unable to parry me, and I just took that incinerate, but it took off a full 20% of my health. Even though the cowardice she applies on the special one is a good source of willpower healing, that hurt, and I don't want to do that again. So I'm trying to be really careful with these special one evades. I'm pretty annoyed with myself here. Maybe a little bit tilted, because I, I practiced for it so many times. Thankfully, this time True Strike is still up, so we can be aggressive, try and push her to another bar, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And right there, I make the mistake of responding when she hits into my counterpunch, and I actually get auto-blocked and parried. Again, takes off 20% of my health, and then a little bit more. So what I should have done there is just waited for her to block, hit into her block, because I could do it as many times as I possibly needed to, until it slowly took her over a bar. That was perfectly viable. I think I just reacted by instinct after getting a little rattled by that first special one, because I had the evade down in duels, and then it didn't work here. Anyway, we're under 50% now. <sighs> I get hit here again. Thankfully, I pushed up to my special two to get some indestructible charges. <sighs> but I still have the true strike up. I'm getting it here. You can see how good of a counter it is when I actually perform correctly, because the counter punch is letting us get the fury and remove the protection. The true strike is letting us completely ignore her armor, because right now she has 10 stacks of armor up. That's 9,000 armor. We would be doing almost nothing on non-critical attacks if true strike didn't also ignore armor. So definitely not my best performance. I got hit early, I got rattled, I got hit again. But Killmonger really was a very safe option there. He has enough health, he has the crit resistance, he has the armor, and more importantly, he has the offensive abilities of Counterpunch and True Strike to just cut through her, ignoring the armor. So I feel confident about that counter in the future. I'm just going to duel even more. I think I dueled until I got it right a few times. Next time I need to follow my own advice and duel until I can't get it wrong. Moving on to Sasquatch. This is Sasquatch on Mighty Charge, but I'm very comfortable with this basic matchup because it used to be my job almost every war, back when that was the thing, to use Human Torch against Sasquatch on Encroaching Stun, the old Node 26. And so I'm comfortable with him going into Wrath. I know how to deal with that. Right there, I try and do a light attack intercept, he does not play ball, and then idles, trying to get me to hit into him so he can parry me. Very, very clever. But basically, we know this is going to be a long fight, we know he's probably going to go into Wrath, we know Mystic Dispersion is going to be a problem. Does look like they aren't running 5 points though, this looks to be 4. It's definitely a problem if we get caught on a dash back. Felt like maybe a little bit of input issues, but whatever, it happens. Um, but we are definitely looking for an intercept. There, we finally caught one. Now we can start landing a few more of these. The power snacks can do full damage. There we go. Throws that. Ticking away. But we do have to deal with Wrath of Tanarak. I go ahead, wait out a few of those, trying to basically use up as much time on Wrath of Tanarak in the corner as I feel comfortable doing, and then throw the special one. Because I can bait heavies all day, I know the timing on them, I don't want to start blocking full combos when he has all of that extra block penetration. So I throw the special three to create some space, he goes unstoppable from the global, and now this is kind of like a reset for the second half of the fight. He throws that, I'm trying to look for an intercept here, and there we finally get one. Okay. So now we just got to get him down the other half. I also go ahead for a heavy there because my temperature was actually getting kind of low. Not something that normally happens in a fight against a mystic, but we were dodging away from him quite a bit while Wrath was up, so it does make sense. Uh, there we go. We get one more light intercept on our backdraft. Don't go for a medium because that commits you to the charge. That's how you get wrecked. We just did a four hit combo, backed up, and then did a light attack. 
it caught him, but note how, because my reflexes are not perfect, I didn't commit to the full combo in case he didn't run forward. So we got the intercept and then waited for another opening to continue putting uh, Nova Flames on him. So other than getting caught on the dash back there, very in control fight. You just have to be ready with Mystic Dispersion. You have to know the timing on his unstoppable heavy when he's in Wrath because that's usually your best opening. You hold your special three to create space because this is an encroaching stun. You can afford to do that. And at the end of the day, it's just Torch against a big beefy Mystic. As long as you don't get hit too many times, he will prevail. So we did win this war. Again, we were pretty much in our target area for deaths, but the specific deaths we had, as has been true all season, were ones we definitely want to avoid going forward. But it's really nice to win. We need a few more of these to land where we want to at the end of the season. Gotta keep on it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was kind of interesting and very nostalgic for me to dust off Torch after all this time and bring him with what used to be my most popular team, these three together. That was kind of nice. I will also have another video from this war. Um, my BG mate Metaphors is sending me his fights with his new rank four Immortal Abomination and his Toad. Uh, we had some really, really great fights with both of those. And so look out for that later this week. And until then, thanks so much for watching, and take care.